it's been a while since I've made a video and so thought I'd make one for you guys. Um, it's been cold in Indiana and I've been distracted. Um, life has a way of doing that sometimes. Formed a major leak in my house so my basement's been flooding and that's diverted from my ability to work on the Camaro. But I've got a pile of parts just waiting to be put on, so I thought, let's get this taken care of. And discovered the rear brakes on the 82 to 88 Camaros, when they had disc brakes, are something I've never seen before. So let's go take a look at it. I'm about to start on this winter project of mine. Going to put new brakes on the rear. I'm a little nervous and anticipating what I see because with only 70,000 miles on this car, it's a good possibility these are the factory brakes. Here's what I have in this wheel well. You can tell for a 30 year old car, it looks pretty dang good. Some overspray in here. Not sure if that's from when my uncle painted it or factory. Stock shocks, which I am going to replace. And these brakes. Finally got blessed with a beautiful day, so it's high time I used that day. So last week I came down here, got the car on jack stands, put a new shock in. The old one was original and does not work anymore. And then started working on the brakes. Now, 88 was the first year for the 1LE option. This car obviously is not one, however. There were only four 1LEs made that year. The rest got either drum brakes or these which are called Delco Moraine. Um, and I find it very interesting. This is the driver's side of the car. And the caliper sits on the rear side of the rotor, which is pretty normal. Uh, but on the passenger side, it sits on the front side of the rotor. And what I've had the largest issue with is that right there. The piston on these calipers spins in. But you also have to put pressure on it. Now, I've seen these calipers before. They're pretty common. Uh, but the difference on this one is that in those divots, only one of them is deep enough for a tool to really take bite. I bought that, that cube tool uh, that you can find and a lot of people recommend it. It wasn't wide enough. Uh, it didn't grab a bite at all. Found another tool that's larger but again, because only one of those divots was deep enough, it would not grab a bite. So, I went down to the parts store this morning and rented this at $65. Um, and, let's see here, I guess the part fell off. 
this is the fitting I used with one notch on it instead of like some of the others that have four or two just the one now the biggest issue here with those notches is there's also a notch when I, what I'm talking about is the top one there um, that has to fit in there and align with the notch on the caliper uh, because the emergency brake system actually makes the piston turn not the brakes by pedal so if this is not aligned well your brake system will not work properly I learned that after spending 12 hours yesterday on this system trying to figure out what the heck's going on here. So now I'm going to try to put this all back together. Now, while doing these brakes, I noticed that the sway bar end links were beyond rotted out for being 30 plus year old rubber parts. So I went ahead and ordered a new set of end links and sway bar bushings. Um, so look forward to that in a new video. Haven't put them on yet. Um, I'm going to get these brakes done first and then we'll go from there. There are those sway bar end links. Not bad for original. Now I bought new shocks for the rear and struts for the front. And I've looked up different videos and how to's on how to do it in this car. I still find it really interesting how it's done though. Uh, for the rear shocks, you obviously have a bolt uh, at the bottom bracket on the uh, on the axle but on the tops where it gets really interesting to me and I'll show you guys uh, being as this is a all original car this carpet's never been touched before so it'll be interesting to show you so here's the rear end cargo area as you can tell it's all original, but to replace the shocks, you have to pull this rear carpet out because right here is where the bolt to the shock is. So on this corner, we pulled it out enough to where you could get to it. And where this piece of foam is, right underneath it, is where the bolt for the upper shock mount is. Other than that, it's, it's fairly simple. Nothing fancy. 
Just got to do it. Well, that's it for the driver's side brake. Now to move on to the passenger side. I'm not going to film much on it. Um, I will show you guys how. It is on the opposite side, which I find very interesting. Parts store guy who I've known since my dad bought this car. He is now the manager of the store. He told me that this is also a common sight on some Ford pickup trucks. Something to think about. I don't have much space on this side of the garage, unfortunately, but as you can see, that caliper is on the front side. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe, share. I appreciate it. I know not many unadulterated third-gen Camaros are out there, so I'm just trying to share what I can with you guys.